okay good afternoon everyone so let's start today's topic that is infective hepatitis or also known as viral hepatitis because viruses are the most common cause of infectious hepatitis all over the world this is an important topic especially from the perspective of a developing country because there are so many cases of viral hepatitis there now let's introduce the topic this is a major public health problem, especially in developing country, because of viral hepatitis A. Hepatitis A is very, very common in the developing world. Hepatitis E mainly causes infection in pregnancy. Okay, so it is important disease. You, you must have studied during obstetrics. Okay, but regarding pediatric age group, hepatitis A is the most important one from the infectious point of view but from the exam point of view hepatitis b is the one which you should prepare well because of a lot of implications of that because it causes chronic liver disease it can cause cirrhosis of the liver it it can be transmitted by so many other way as well okay and there is a common belief in the general population once hepatitis b you know enters into the body okay there is no cure okay so we'll talk all about that in today's class so this is a major health problem and viral hepatitis is caused by mainly hepatotropic viruses they are hepatitis a b c d and e and g is also added in the list and they all cause similar type of acute illness so during the acute condition all all hepatitis viruses cause similar type of illness like fever okay then pain in the right hypochondriac area jaundice nausea vomiting anorexia so all of them are causing similar type of problem now there are so many other viruses apart from this hepatotropic virus which also cause hepatitis and look at the list here okay herpes simplex virus cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus varicella zoster virus hiv Rubella virus, adenovirus, enterovirus, parvovirus B19, and arbovirus as well. So, so many of them can cause hepatitis because viral illness usually cause, you know, involvement of multiple system or multiple organ and liver is one of them. This is how you remember. Among the hepatotrophic viruses now, hepatotrophic viruses means this one, which mainly infects the liver, okay? Very rarely other tissues are in, involved, except hepatitis B. Other tissues are rarely infected by other hepatotrophic virus, but hepatitis B can. Hepatitis B is a DNA virus and rest are RNA virus. This is very important point from the MCQ exam. Hepatitis A and hepatitis E doesn't cause chronic illness okay so they don't they cause acute illness and there are two possibilities now either the patient completely recover or the patient die there is no middle way there it doesn't lead to any chronicity whereas hepatitis b hepatitis c and hepatitis d virus they can cause morbidity and mortality through chronic illness especially b and c d is a part of b we say so we'll talk about that later. But hepatitis B and hepatitis C, they can lead to chronic liver disease and cirrhosis of the liver. Now see here, there are some terminology regarding these viral hepatitis. Okay, so let me explain this. Hepatitis A is known as infectious, infectious hepatitis. B is known as serum hepatitis, okay, serum. This was the term which was used, you know, in the past. And these are the terms which, which we must know till now because our examiner want to hear, okay, these terms from us. Infectious hepatitis, hepatitis A, serum hepatitis, hepatitis B. And rest of the other are, are known as non-A, non-B hepatitis. Non-A, non-B hepatitis. 
So see there, all other E, okay, uh, and C, and G also these days. So E is enterically transmitted, and C is parenterally transmitted. Now this A and E both are enterically transmitted actually, and B, D, and C all are parenterally transmitted. Now whenever we talk about B, D is a part of that. Okay, without B, D infection cannot occur. So it always follows B. So E and C are left behind, isn't it? So E is enterically transmitted. C is parenterally transmitted, and G is also like A and E. So these are some of the important uh, historical perspective or terminology regarding viral hepatitis. Now let's start with hepatitis A. Hepatitis A belongs to RNA virus, and inside that RNA virus, it belongs to Picorna virus family. Regarding the epidemiology, it is so common in developing country that prevalence rate approaches. 100% in children by 5 years of age this is a very very important point you see there all almost all of the children less than 5 year of age are already infected by hepatitis a okay uh, by the time they reach 5 years of age it causes only acute hepatitis there is no carrier stage there is no chronic stage and many of them are having asymptomatic or subclinical infection and many of them they don't even go to hospital because they don't develop any sign and symptom why to go there isn't it but prevalence even consider them it is transmitted by fecal oral route the fecal oral route is a contaminated food and water this is the you know transmission route or way of hepatitis a this is very important point Fecal excretion occurs during incubation period and it peaks just before the onset of symptoms and it is minimal after a week of jaundice. And this is another important point. So to know that we, know, we should know what is the incubation period of uh, this hepatitis A. See here, the mean incubation period is about four weeks and the range is 15 to 50 days. But four weeks, four weeks, one month, okay? One month is the incubation period. Now, what is the meaning here? Fecal excretion occurs during incubation period. It peaks just before the onset of symptom and minimal after a week of jaundice. So probably after the diagnosis of this disease, the child okay, should be uh, resting at home. The child should not go to the school. A considerable amount of time should be given for the proper rest. Otherwise, uh, from that child, you know, for example, it's a daycare baby or something like that, nursery or even a school going baby. So they may be infected. What is the pathogenesis okay, of hepatitis A? So this is a hepatotropic virus. So liver is the main organ, liver is the main organ. Yeah, which is damaged. Now, after that, what happens inside the liver? Let's talk about this. Now, the entire liver is involved with necrosis in this case. The entire liver is involved with necrosis and that is very important in central lobar area or central lobular area, we say. And there is increased cellularity, which is predominant in portal area. Now, when we analyze the histology of the liver, there are, these are all important points there. Portal tract or portal area, the central lobular area and all those. So, just know one thing, there are necrosed hepatocytes. At the same time, there are increased inflammatory cells. But the lobular architecture remains intact. This is an important point, probably because of this, you know, uh, there is a high chance of complete recovery in the child. And bile duct damage is often not found. So this is the pathogenesis of hepatitis A. It can directly damage the liver. The injury occurs in three ways here. One is cytopathic injury to the hepatocyte. It can directly damage those hepatocytes. And you all know what are present inside these hepatocytes. There are certain enzymes present. And the important enzymes here are ALT and AST. ALT and AST. 
ALT is more important than AST regarding viral hepatitis. Now in the beginning, that ALT is rapidly coming out, so it is very high in the blood. AST is also high in the blood. But one important point now, if that ALT is falling, okay, let me give you one example and explain this. Two days ago, we measured this ALT level and it was 1000 international unit per liter. And today, we measured that ALT again and it has come down drastically to 50. Now in two days from 1000, it has come down to 50. That is not a good sign. That shows that this liver is severely necrose. Okay, severely necrose. So it shows the poor prognosis in the child. At the same time, it will always happen with rising bilirubin. Bilirubin is consistently rise in this type of situation and ALT will consistently fall. In severe necrosis only, okay, please um, don't get confused here. Usually ALT remains higher, but if there is a massive necrosis of hepatocyte occur, then suddenly it may fall and this is not a good sign. Another important point is prothrombin time. Now prothrombin time is called prognostic indicator of liver injury. And if prothrombin time is prolonged, the prognosis of that child is poor. So we should always measure it. Cholestasis also occur in this type of illness. And I'm sure every student know the you know, mechanism here. Because of swelling of those hepatocytes in the early stages, they can pressure, okay? They can give pressure to those biliary canaliculi. So this leads to cholestasis. And these are the enzyme which are present in biliary duct, ALP, GGT, okay? ALP and GGT. And prothrombin time, this prothrombin time we already talked about. Actually, rather than PT here, we can write nucleotidase. Five nucleotidase is another enzyme which is associated with those biliary canaliculi. So that would be high. Prothrombin time is already talked about. Now, apart from them, there is changes in carbohydrate, ammonia, and drug metabolism. There is high chance of hypoglycemia because of uh, carbohydrate, you know, metabolism is affected. And in yesterday's class, we talked about that. Ammonia cannot be converted into urea, so it will remain as free ammonia, which is toxic substance, and drug metabolism is badly affected. So these are some other important points. Now, after knowing all these things, let's talk about what happens to the child. What are the clinical manifestations? Clinical manifestations of hepatitis A. Now, hepatitis A virus leads to fever, malaise, jaundice, anorexia, abdominal pain or abdominal discomfort, okay? And that occurs mainly in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. Along with that, dark urine is also passed. Now we need to explain all these things, okay, one after other. Then only you remember this for a longer time. Now this is an infectious disease, so fever is quite common. But fever is not that very high grade. Malaise, okay, anorexia, and vomiting. These are very typical features of viral hepatitis A. Anorexia and vomiting is so pronounced that the child doesn't even want to look at the food. But remember, parents are forcing that, isn't it? As a parent, we always want our kid, especially at the time of illness, we want them to eat even more. And we are right. Okay, That has to be done because during illness, our body is demanding more energy. But the problem here is the child doesn't want to eat at all. The child becomes nauseated even by the sight of the food. This is very important symptom. Now, liver is swollen here. Liver is inflamed. It is enlarged. So the capsule of the liver, which is known as glisten capsule, is stretched. And that can result in pain in the right upper quadrant. When we examine, there is tenderness as well. Now, what is the reason for this dark urine in this case? Who can answer this? 
Yes, guys. Uh, there occur, there, there occur uh, college stations. There occur, sir. So this is because of this, sir. Dark green will be produced, sir. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, later, there will be. A... Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Please, Adil. Yes. Sir. Later, there is obstruction of the lateral calculi. There is no bile will enter into the intestine, and no uh, urobilogen uh, will form, and no. Green color will be not in normal color, so that's what we need to find out. Okay, now let me explain this. Okay, all of you, please mute yourself now. So the reason for dark urine here is cholestasis. As a result of cholestasis, the conjugated bilirubin, okay, conjugated bilirubin is high in the blood. Make it very simple. Conjugated bilirubin is high in the blood. and that conjugated bilirubin is water soluble bilirubin so it is excreted in the urine so that urine becomes more yellow than the normal the dark urine in this case is slightly yellow colored urine this is a example of hepatocellular jaundice that's why okay so let's uh, continue we are talking about different clinical manifestations of viral hepatitis a now diarrhea often occurs in children diarrhea often occurs it is one of the associated associated finding jaundice is subtle in young babies and it is only detected by lab test subtle means very mild minimal jaundice the eye doesn't look yellow okay the other part doesn't look yellow so it is only a detected by lab test Now, among the older children and adult they are usually symptomatic and typically that symptom lasts several weeks and almost 70 percent of them develop jaundice so i can confidently say jaundice is one of the very important manifestation of viral hepatitis a that symptom may last about one month and after that almost all recover See here, almost all of them recover, so the prognosis is really good. But a very few percentage can develop fulminant hepatitis. Fulminant, fulminant means severe hepatitis, uh, where there is high chance of death because this fulminant hepatitis can give rise to acute hepatocellular failure, also known as fulminant liver failure, and. there are multi organ dysfunction happens okay there is sepsis high chance of sepsis in this case there is chance of hepatic encephalopathy and if we do not provide good care during this time high chance of mortality as well one very important point in viral hepatitis a it is not associated with chronic liver disease please remember this from this a lot of mcq question can be asked to you it doesn't cause chronic liver disease or it doesn't cause any carrier state either the patient completely recover or they die because of fulminant hepatitis let's move on now how to make a diagnosis of hepatitis a what you do you have to take a history a good history you have to do physical examination and you have to do some investigation now most of the things are included here so take a history of jaundice in the family because this is a contagious illness okay this is a communicable disease so multiple member in the same family may be having the same problem because it is transmitted by fecal oral route ask about the travel history okay if there are no family members involved the diagnosis is established by serological criteria and we don't usually go for liver biopsy because this is acute illness there is no role of liver biopsy actually and among the serological criteria we go for anti hepatitis a virus antibody so anti hepatitis a virus antibody is detected this is an acute infection so we go for igm anti hepatitis a virus now it is present at the onset of illness and it is usually disappear within 4 month but may persist more than 6 month as well and after that igg is detectable every student know this from the immunology 
or microbiology knowledge in the beginning in any acute infection igm is formed okay, later on igg will replace that igm and the level of igm doesn't increase after that so, okay so here igm gives us the diagnosis at the same time don't forget to do liver function test because liver is damaged here so go for what is the total serum bilirubin what is the direct component what are liver enzyme label okay what is a, a, a prothrombin time and all those things so we find that alt and ast are always high bilirubin is always high uh, usually in two third of the patient okay two third alp and ggt are also high because of cholestasis but in comparison to alt and ast alp and ggt are not that high because uh, these are the enzyme which are connected with biliary duct prothrombin time should always be measured in any cases of acute liver disease or even in chronic liver disease because prolonged pt tells us that the prognosis is poor so these are some of the very important point regarding uh, the diagnosis of viral hepatitis a and one important thing because it is very common in children so how long we give a leave for those children the parents may ask us that right as a doctor we should answer that question so here is the um, you know answer for you viruses are excreted two week before to one week after the onset so the child uh, should be given rest during this time look at this uh, graph here this is a highly informative one now see here this is the week after exposure okay week after exposure and this is the excretion of viruses in fecal matter or feces or stool okay this is the graph here igm and this graph is telling igg so igm is high in the acute period and later on it will be replaced by igg and this is the time when jaundice appear and this jaundice slowly disappear within a month okay within a month so what are the complications of hepatitis a already talked about fulminant hepatitis can occur and that fulminant hepatitis can kill the child until and unless the management is very good and fulminant hepatitis is manifested by progressive rise in bilirubin level in the beginning the amino transferase level are very high like alt and ast but later on because of massive damage to the liver those enzyme will rapidly fall at the same time pt is getting prolonged and prolonged okay listen it carefully bilirubin is higher and higher amino transferase level are very high in the beginning but they are rapidly falling and prothrombin time is getting prolonged and prolonged and at the same time bleeding can also happen probably hematemesis melina or bleeding in any other area this is a very sick child and this is the manifestation of fulminant hepatitis so serum albumin level may fall resulting in edema and ascites and ammonia level are elevated which can result in hepatic encephalopathy and if that is not identified or treated in time it may lead to coma and death of the child so one important knowledge you need to take from this class is viral hepatitis a is a benign illness Okay, remember this we don't need to afraid of this condition because the incidence and prevalence is so high in our part of the world we don't need to afraid but some of the children if they show danger symptom and sign then we should be very careful in the management and those danger symptom and sign are signs and symptom of hepatic encephalopathy one another sign and symptom of bleeding from any area okay and third one when that very high level of alt and ast are rapidly falling so in this cases we directly admit them in the hospital and manage them inside the hospital 
do not take it lightly during that time now what is the treatment see that there is no specific treatment for hepatitis a there are no antiviral drug available for hepatitis a so treatment is purely supportive and symptomatic even in fulminant hepatitis we don't have any antiviral drug so if the child is comatose we care for that coma if the child is having coagulopathy you give fresh frozen plasma okay so all those symptomatic and supportive management has to be done and let's hope for the best regarding the prevention fecal oral route is the major you know way of transmission so good hygienic practice should be done okay good hygienic practice should be done like improve sanitation and personal hygiene and the child or the patient is contagious for about 7 day after the onset of jaundice so should be excluded from school child care or workplace i have already told this so many times now there are certain vaccines which are available for viral hepatitis a and those vaccines are inactivated and live attenuated vaccine inactivated and live attenuated okay i'm sure every student know the meaning of this now okay because you have already done this in basic science now these vaccines are highly immunogenic and safe and they are mainly approved for more than 2 year child so safe okay you don't need to worry maybe live attenuated vaccine probably not given in severely immuno compromised child otherwise they are very safe so intramuscular okay these vaccines are given im or intramuscular in two dose schedule with second dose given 6 to 12 month after the first and the zero conversion rate is very good zero conversion means the production of antibody it exceed 90% after the first and approach near to 100% after the second so these are good vaccines for the control of hepatitis a now let me talk practically this is a theoretical discussion till now okay so should we routinely go for this vaccination in developing world like our countries or not that type of question may be asked to you by your senior and the answer is no because almost 100% of our kid already got this disease and they are already you know for example many of these are sub clinical and we never consider this as a very serious type of infection these vaccines are mainly given by the developed countries where the incidence incidence and prevalence of this disease is very low now with this discussion let's talk about hepatitis b now which is very important uh, illness let's start with the etiology hepatitis b disease is caused by hepatitis b virus which belongs to hepa dna okay family hepa dna viride or hepa dna virus family anything you can say and it belongs to dna virus it is one of the member of dna virus it is a non cytopathogenic hepatotropic virus which has double stranded dna so what does that mean unlike hepatitis a it doesn't directly damage the liver cell probably immunological mechanism is mainly involved that's why it is known as non cytopathogenic virus the surface of this virus include hepatitis b surface antigen and this is the main diagnostic feature of this virus if we detect this hepatitis b surface antigen we can confirm yes this patient is having hepatitis b infection at the same time there are different types of antigen as well they are known as hepatitis b core antigen in the short form it is written like this okay h b c a g hepatitis b core antigen the c stands for core antigen the nucleocapsid of the virus itself and another important hepatitis b e antigen okay c antigen and e antigen now these are present in the inner portion of the virion so they are also important terms to remember because 
or sometimes we can go for the investigation regarding these as well one small point for you if hepatitis uh, b e antigen is very commonly present inside the body that shows this person is very infective to the other this shows infectivity of the person so this is one point you should remember from this because uh, commonly this type of questions can be asked now where this virus multiply or replicate hepatitis b virus replication commonly occurs in the liver but also in the lymphocyte spleen kidney as well as pancreas so i already told you in the beginning if you remember all other hepatotrophic viruses mainly infect the liver except hepatitis b all other organs are also affected by hepatitis b apart from liver okay this is how hepatitis b virus is seen under the electron microscope now let's talk about the epidemiology so what are the important point regarding epidemiology of hepatitis b children are usually asymptomatic in case of viral hepatitis b and almost 10% okay of all acute viral hepatitis occurs in children 10% only now this is not a common viral infection in the children hepatitis a is much more common than hepatitis b 20 to 30% of all chronic hepatitis cases are because of hepatitis b now all chronic hepatitis okay hepatitis a never cause chronic hepatitis so of course it is very easy answer for you either hepatitis b or hepatitis c they are the important one now let me tell you one very important point here the risk of chronic infection is inversely related to the age that means smaller the child higher the chance of chronicity and let me explain this by giving one example here if a newborn baby if a newborn baby get hepatitis b from the mother that newborn baby has 90% chance of developing chronic hepatitis then okay then the older child of 10 years for example if he gets hepatitis b from some other source this is absolutely important point so on this topic the take home message is one of the take home messages of this topic is this one so what what is the lesson we have learned we have to prevent the development of hepatitis b in that newborn anyhow otherwise there is very high chance of development of cirrhosis by the time that child become 8 to 10 year old because it doesn't take long time to develop cirrhosis after a viral hepatitis b infection okay and we know how to prevent so towards the end of this topic we are going to talk about that there are some important risk factor in children and those are perinatal exposure to hepatitis b surface antigen positive mother definitely because baby at the time of birth how they get hepatitis b from the mother if mother is hepatitis b positive then that baby will get it okay other chances are there but they are very rare the risk is very high if hepatitis b e antigen is present in the mother now see here this e shows infectivity okay if mother is highly infectic of course the baby has more chance of getting infection and the point which i just discussed to you is written here again 70 to 90% of those baby become chronically infected if untreated and may develop chronic hepatitis cirrhosis of the liver and hepatocellular cancer as well absolutely important sentence from the you know preventive aspect and from curative aspect as well now apart from that what are the other way we get hepatitis b now i am talking about the pediatric age group now so what are the other way those children may get hepatitis b here iv drug and uh, blood product 
which were not screened properly sexual contact especially in case of adolescent and contact with other carrier so these are some other way by which hepatitis b enters into the body but remember in pediatric age group the most important one is from the mother now hepatitis b virus is present in blood serum and serous exudate in very high concentration just like uh, hiv hiv is also present in high concentration in this type of fluid whereas in saliva okay vaginal fluid and semen it is present in a moderate concentration and in breast milk okay it is present in very low concentration that's why we continue to advise for breast milk even if the mother is having hepatitis b okay there is no contraindication for breastfeeding if the mother is having hepatitis b to the baby regarding the incubation period it is quite long look at this average 120 days in comparison to hepatitis a that was 30 days or one month here it is four month and it can easily lead to chronic infection and that is known as more than 6 month present of hepatitis b surface antigen okay <clears throat> let's start again we are talking about hepatitis b infection in the child now please have a look at this uh, graph and explain this to me okay anybody just just take a bit of time here and can you tell me what is the meaning of this graph anyone okay so students are joining so let me tell you look here this is at birth okay this is follow this let me use the pointer here this is at birth and these are the older children and this is the chance or percentage of chronic infection okay and here there is a chance of symptomatic infection if a baby okay if a baby is infected near to the birth time okay near to the birth time or very early in life there is high chance of chronicity or chronic infection this is one meaning which i get from this graph and another one the symptomatic infection is more common in the older children than the younger one uh, towards the newborn period or maybe very younger babies or younger children the symptomatic infection is less common the asymptomatic infection is more common in them whereas it is more commonly seen in older children so chronicity and symptomatic infection occurs exactly in the opposite way in relation to the age younger the age more chance of chronicity older the age less chance of chronicity but more chance of symptomatic infection so this is the meaning so let's talk about pathogenesis of viral hepatitis b now okay what are the important points i already talked about this unlike hepatitis a it doesn't directly damage the hepatocyte the immune mediated process is involved there now how how it does that okay now see here the viral antigen which are present on the cell surface they are recognized by okay they are recognized by cytotoxic t cell with the help of class 1 mhc molecule now this uh, principle i'm sure many of the student know from immunology viral antigen on the cell surface are damaged by cytotoxic t cell directly with the help of class 1 mhc protein or molecule if we talk about antigen presenting cell 
they take the help of class 2 mhc protein or molecule and present that antigen to t cell that is helper t cell that is a massive difference between cytotoxic t cell and helper t cell cytotoxic t cell damage that particular okay target with the help of mhc class 1 whereas helper t cell identify that particular antigen with the help of mhc type 2 okay so see there what happens now that cells the infected cell i mean where the virus antigens are present would be damaged by cytotoxic t cell this severity is directly proportional to the degree of immune response more degree of immune response more chance of damage and because of this immune mediated mechanism some extra hepatic manifestations are also seen which we will talk a little bit later one of the important extra hepatic manifestation is nephrotic syndrome in case of hepatitis b another is serum sickness another may be polyarteritis nodosa so we'll talk about them a little bit later and what is the mechanism for chronic hepatitis is relatively unknown now with this let's talk about what are the clinical manifestation of hepatitis a sorry hepatitis b viral infection regarding the clinical features most of the children are asymptomatic especially they are asymptomatic if they are younger acute hepatitis b is similar to hepatitis a virus but it may be more severe and involves skin and joint at the same time so all type of viral hepatitis look similar during acute illness what does that mean the child may be having fever okay maybe having malaise headache anorexia vomiting pain in the right hypochondriac area so most of them a bit similar if they are symptomatic lethargy anorexia and malaise occur about six to seven week after the exposure because incubation period is quite variable it starts from 45 days onwards so sometimes the symptom can be seen a bit early sometimes it may occur late jaundice is present in 25 percent cases only so jaundice is not the major symptom in case of hepatitis b whereas in hepatitis a remember it is present in 70 percent of the cases 70 versus 25 this jaundice may begin eight week after the exposure and last for about one month so if they present with jaundice then it may last for about one month the rate of fulminant hepatitis is much higher than hepatitis a because the severity of infection inside the liver is also high and a very important point is chronic hepatitis now look at the a percentage of a chronic hepatitis here chronic active hepatitis can result in cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma after many years of infection in 30 percent of them and that is known by jaundice and elevated liver enzyme whereas chronic persistent hepatitis is 70 percent of them which only causes elevated liver enzyme now i'm sure you are a little bit confused here so let me make it easy for you Chronic hepatitis occur in about 10% cases of hepatitis B. Okay, 10%. Now, just before the break, I talked about this. It depends on the age, actually. If newborns are infected, then the chance is 90%. But newborns are not the only pediatric age group. If we take all pediatric age group together, okay, and then the percentage would be around 10 let's talk like this so 10 percent cases of hepatitis b in pediatric age group can go into chronic hepatitis this is the first sentence now out of that chronic hepatitis cases 30 percent may develop chronic active hepatitis whereas 70 percent may develop chronic persistent hepatitis now chronic active hepatitis is much severe than chronic persistent hepatitis this active hepatitis can quickly result in cirrhosis as well as hepatocell carcinoma whereas chronic persistent hepatitis can only lead to chronic liver disease now what are those 
extra hepatic manifestation in case of hepatitis b this is very important question from the examination point of view so have a look here serum sickness serum sickness like prodrome which is marked by arthralgia and skin lesion like urticaria macular and maculopapular rashes now, this serum sickness is one of the example of type 3 hypersensitivity reaction type 3 okay so this is mainly caused by immune complex deposition in different part of the body and in this case arthralgia and skin rashes are very common polyarteritis nodosa is a type of vasculitis it's called pan vasculitis disorder membranous and membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis because of this this child may develop nephrotic syndrome so always remember this if a patient comes with nephrotic syndrome in the hospital we should always take the history of hepatitis b in the past don't forget that simply ask one question jaundice in the past okay that is an important clue for hepatitis b infection and we can confirm that with investigation aplastic anemia is another important extra hepatic manifestation by hepatitis b and this is usually a severe type of aplastic anemia and it occurs within two months of the jaundice now aplastic anemia most of the students already know aplastic anemia uh, isn't it is severe bone marrow suppression or depression where pancytopenia occurs pleural effusion myocarditis and pericarditis are also occurring but they are quite rare in comparison to the other now how to confirm the diagnosis what are the lab investigation we like to order so cbc is the first thing let's start from there and in the cbc the wbc count is usually normal but there is lymphocytosis this is very typical in viral infection lymphocytosis is there but the total wbc count may be normal but that may be slightly high in some of the children peripheral blood smear so mild hemolysis okay mild hemolysis now in peripheral smear uh, how i identify hemolysis because of the different shape and sizes of rbc different shape and size of the rbc liver enzymes are elevated no doubt about it this is the case of hepatitis they are usually very high and sgpt is markedly elevated than sgot now which one is ast and which one is alt here anybody sp sgpt is alt sir very good yes sohel is absolutely right sgpt <coughs> is is alt and sgot is ast okay don't get confused here because uh, many of the exam they they use both of these terms and you should be absolutely you know correct regarding this now sgpt is more elevated than sgot in alcoholic liver disease sgot is higher than sgpt routine screening requires at least two serological marker that is hbs ag which is called hepatitis b surface antigen that is the first to appear and if you want to know how infectious is the patient then go for hepatitis b e antigen okay this shows the infectivity of the patient now this table is is a, a bit complicated for you but if you pay attention well this is not complicated and a lot of questions can be asked from this table okay so just just focus here please i'm sure all of you can see it nicely just see here let me wait for 30 seconds okay have a look there
so let me explain now okay a lot of questions can be asked from this type of table there are related questions so let let us make our concept quite clear acute infection of hepatitis b means hbs ag should be present here without hbs ag acute infection cannot be diagnosed it has to be there hbe ag shows infectiousness of the patient or infectivity okay this is a protective antibody anti hbs ag also known as anti hbs only it is a protective type of antibody if somebody uh, was already cured from hepatitis b or if somebody has got vaccination against hepatitis b then this anti hbs is positive now see here recent hepatitis b infection and cured this is positive and recent hepatitis b vaccine vaccine virus vaccination sorry recent hepatitis b virus vaccination this is also positive so this is a um, protective type of antibody this is very important knowledge anti hbag is only present in the you know cure type of patient okay and anti hbc igg type of antibody is mainly present in chronic infection this is igg antibody it may be present in later half of acute infection but it is mainly present in the chronic one because it is igg type of antibody and of course if somebody is cured from the disease then this igg is also present now how chronic infection is confirmed hbs ag should be there hb ag it may be there may not be there if a person is highly infectious it is there in increase amount otherwise it may be uh, you know not detectable okay and this one uh, anti hbc igg is positive these are the uh, cured patient okay. anti hbs is positive there should not have hbs ag if still hbs ag there uh, hbs ag or hepatitis b surface antigen is there i can never uh, tell those patients that you are cured okay hbs ag must be cleared from the system then only we label this patient as a cured patient and finally the hepatitis b vaccination there is only one positive thing there that is anti hbs okay don't forget that now how we do treatment of hepatitis b now there are no available medical therapy okay in case of hepatitis b in majority of the patient means the treatment is not that very successful though we have got a treatment definitely like interferon alpha and uh, sometimes even a drug called lamivudine we can use that but the success rate after a treating by this medicine is not very high patients with low serum of hepatitis b dna titer hbe ag positive acute inflammation okay are most likely to respond if they respond to this medicine okay. see here children okay with long term eradication rate is just 25% with interferon alpha 25% is not a high percentage just 1/4 of the patient and liver transplantation is curative in indi stage of hepatitis b infection but again the challenge is the donor the donor is the big issue here uh, there are you know different types of donor uh, living uh, people and cadaver there are two sources but still uh, this is uh, very difficult to get now what are the complication of hepatitis b just see there acute fulminant hepatitis can occur this this can kill the child or the patient this results in acute hepatocellular failure coagulopathy commonly occurs during that situation encephalopathy commonly occur and cerebral edema can also occur that's why this this has a high mortality rate it is more than 30% chronic hepatitis cirrhosis of liver and hepatocellular carcinoma are non complication that's why 
everybody is afraid when they hear this disease hepatitis b because they have already heard about this condition even even the non health related persons have heard about this and they worry about hepatitis b membranous glomerulonephritis or membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis leading to nephrotic syndrome and aplastic anemia all of these can be written as complication here even you can write polyarteritis nodosa here now what are the immuno prophylaxis of hepatitis b or what about the vaccine let's talk about them now there are two types of immuno prophylaxis products which are available and that is immunoglobulin and the vaccine now immunoglobulin is a passive type of immunization and vaccine is a active type of immunization we all know that now both can be used very commonly in clinical practice now when we use that hepatitis b immunoglobulin provides short term protection it may last for about 3 to 6 month and it is indicated only in specific post exposure circumstances and one of the best possible circumstance is in the newborn period in the newborn period if mother is having hepatitis b surface antigen positivity without any doubt i have to give this hepatitis b immunoglobulin to the baby immediately as soon as possible hepatitis b vaccine is used for pre exposure and post exposure protection both and it provides long term protection this is excellent vaccine and all of us okay all of us means we are the medical uh, people medical personnel we are going to work in the hospital very soon after becoming doctor or maybe some of the students have already started working isn't it they write doctor already in front of their name and many of them are already started to done some surgery because i am in constant touch with my student and many of them are doing that now remember one thing before you touch your patient before you do all that procedure in the hospital protect yourself from hepatitis b and that protection is provided by vaccine we 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 can we have to take three doses okay that is called zero dose after one month the second dose okay and after six months the third dose zero zero dose means first dose so if if today i take the first dose that is called zero dose second dose after one month third dose after six month that will give us immunity or protection against hepatitis b so if somebody has not taken it before okay they should take it as soon as possible because you know already what are the risk involved here what complication can happen so let's not take any chances now have a look at this uh, table here this is a recommended okay recommended schedule of hepatitis immunoprophylaxis to prevent perinatal transmission infant of hepatitis b surface antigen positive mother so we give hepatitis b immunoglobulin at the time of birth within 12 hour it should be given within 12 hour that is very very important one first dose of vaccine okay within 12 hour again but we don't give them at the same site uh, one is given on the left arm another is given on the right arm we should not give them together because one is immunoglobulin another is vaccine okay they should not be given at the same site this is not a live live vaccine okay. this is not a live vaccine so it doesn't matter i can give together with immunoglobulin but not at the same site the second dose of vaccine is given after one month and third dose of vaccine is given at six month this is absolutely important knowledge and routinely this question is asked during the exam now what is the advantage of this let me tell you or let me remind you that statement again if a newborn baby gets hepatitis b from the mother there is 70 to 90% chance of developing chronic liver disease and cirrhosis 
by 8 to 10 years of life. And I can prevent those diseases from happening by giving this type of thing. So let's not ignore. This is absolutely important one. So let's talk about hepatitis D and hepatitis E, which are the two remaining you know, viral infection. Okay, we, we still have some time, so we can handle that. Hepatitis D virus is called defective virus. It is known as a defective virus because it cannot produce its own infection without a concurrent hepatitis B infection. It needs hepatitis B for the infection in the patient. It can present as co-infection and super-infection. Now look at the difference between these two terms, co-infection and super-infection. Now co-infection means hepatitis B virus and hepatitis D virus infection occur simultaneously at the same time. Simultaneously means at the same time. And in this condition, the acute hepatitis is more severe than hepatitis B alone, but chance of chronic hepatitis is low. Whereas super infection means it is superimposed on chronic hepatitis B. Or if somebody is having carrier state of hepatitis B, on top of that, hepatitis D infection occurs later on. Let's understand like this. A person is already having hepatitis B infection. At that time, there was no hepatitis D. Hepatitis D enters into the body later on and can cause super infection in that person. Now, what is the consequence? Fulminant hepatitis is high. Okay, fulminant hepatitis is high because of the super infection. And there is rapid chance of progression to cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma as well. So super infection has worse prognosis than co-infection. Regarding the incubation period, it is two to eight weeks, okay, much shorter than other. It is diagnosed by detecting antibody against hepatitis D virus. But remember, you have to detect HBSAG as well, because without HBSAG, this viral infection cannot occur. And prevention is done by immunizing against hepatitis B. Very easy answer. Sometimes students are really confused. If I ask this question in the VIVA exam, okay, and the question comes like this, how you protect hepatitis D virus infection? And we don't have any vaccine against hepatitis D, isn't it? But remember, without hepatitis B, hepatitis D infection doesn't occur. So that is the answer for you. If we vaccinate against hepatitis B, D cannot occur. So you get the protection. No. Hepatitis E, okay, hepatitis E virus infection. Uh, this is a RNA virus of Calci virus family. It is a type of RNA virus okay, which belongs to Calci virus family. It can occur in epidemics. Now, time and again, there are you know, many cases of hepatitis E in some particular areas of the country. Okay. First of all, the virus should be endemic there and uh, suddenly there is outbreak. Outbreak means more number of cases are occurring over a short period of time. That is called epidemic. Fico oral root transmission is the way, just like hepatitis A virus. Incubation period is 15 to 60 days, a little bit similar to hepatitis A again. This is a cytopathic virus, same like hepatitis A, okay? There is not much difference till now. And clinical illness is also similar to hepatitis A virus, but in comparison, it is more severe. Now, what are those uh, clinical symptoms? If you ask this question, answer is same one. It can result in jaundice, malaise, Okay, anorexia, vomiting, okay, nausea, fever, and abdominal pain, especially in the right upper quadrant. So not much difference regarding the clinical features. 
this is the viral illness which only produces acute infection or acute illness it doesn't cause any carrier state and it doesn't lead to any chronic infection only acute illness so there are only uh, two possibilities now either the patient completely recover from the acute illness or the patient may die sometime but that chance is very rare remember we are talking in about pediatric age group now one very very important point though is this hepatitis e virus infection has high case fatality rate during pregnancy if pregnant ladies are infected by hepatitis e virus there is high chance of mortality now see here the overall fatality or overall mortality rate is around 15 to 25 percent and during third trimester it even reaches about 40 percent so this is very very important point so if a pregnant lady develops jaundice okay we should not ignore it that lady should be immediately admitted in the hospital and done very good investigation and make sure hepatitis e virus is not there if hepatitis e virus is there though we don't have any medicine there still the good symptomatic and supportive therapy can be done inside the hospital now how to confirm the diagnosis this confirmation is done by detection of igm type of antibody to viral antigen so again antibody detection can be done and this uh, can be done after one week of infection because the antibody uh, takes a bit of time for the production and apart from that we can detect rna okay by pcr polymerase chain reaction can be used for the detection of rna as well there are no vaccine available and there are no medicines also so we have to go for symptomatic and supportive therapy now before i go to these questions one small thing i like to highlight what about hepatitis c virus okay we have not talked about hepatitis c because many of the things are similar to hepatitis b here okay but still i like to highlight few points here hepatitis c virus is also transmitted just like hepatitis b in the body by parenteral transmission route so sexual contact okay the contaminated needles and contaminated instrument from mother to baby as well as blood transfusion so all these are important and uh, one very very important question your teacher may ask you regarding the chronicity regarding the chronicity between hepatitis b and hepatitis c hepatitis c virus has even more chance of developing chronic liver disease and cirrhosis of the liver than hepatitis b okay so remember this one important point otherwise many of the things are same it can also result in a cirrhosis as well as hepatocellular carcinoma so at the end these are the questions okay please go through them uh, so 